okay so uh, we continue from the previous uh, 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 class so uh, where we were looking at uh, the anagrams of the word lo okay okay so did you think about uh, uh, the way uh, how to count the anagrams of lo okay and why is it different from that of lo ck and uh, if you have solved it uh, very good otherwise uh, we have to wait a little more uh, before we uh, we look at this counting okay so we will look at uh, another example now so a family from let's say maharashtra uh, decided to go for a, uh, a tour okay so for their vacation so when they were thinking about this they decided okay either uh, we can go to kashmir or uh, we can go to kerala okay so you know the either the southmost or the northmost part of india maybe right and uh, both are like very beautiful uh, uh, beautiful uh, states and very nice places to see and then they said okay uh, in kashmir we can you know we have nine possible interesting places we found and then uh, out of these nine places maybe we can we can visit four right you know with our budget uh, we can visit uh, four of these places or we can go to kerala where, where we found uh, 10 interesting places and maybe we can go to five out of these places okay so these are our like you know choices so uh, we can either go to uh, four places out of these nine interesting locations that we you know shortlisted or uh, any of the five uh, locations in kerala Uh, out of the uh, 10 places we have shortlisted now the question is that how many different uh, uh, itineraries uh, we can uh, you know they can they can come up with right so finally they have not yet decided but suppose they are going to decide right it can be any of this right because they don't have maybe a preference but you know they they or depending on their preference they choose one of these but which one is it right so what are the possible options that we have Uh, for their itiner so itiner it means that there is the order is important right the way that they are going to visit like for example if you are visiting let's say three uh, cities right going a then to b and then going to c is different from going to a then to c and then to b or from b a and c because the travel tickets and bookings of the hotels etc are going to be different so the itiner is are going to be uh different uh, depending on the order in which they are going to visit now how do you find out the number right so here we are going to use two different principles right we have both the addition principle and the product rule right so these two principles we can use because for example if you take the first part alone right going to kashmir and visit four out of the nine places right we know how to find it right so out of the nine places i want to select the order in which i am going to visit the four so how do i do this so uh, out of the nine i can choose uh, any of the four right places so the first place i am going to visit i can be any of the nine places the second place i am going to visit can be any of the remaining eight places the third place is going to be any of the seven places and the last place i am going to visit in kashmir can be any of the six places but uh, they may not decide to go to kashmir at the end maybe they decide okay we can either go to kerala or to kashmir right so maybe they instead of the so kashmir they have all these possibilities and then this can be multiplied right because the choices are independent or in in the other case they decide to go to kerala right they have five possible destination they can choose from the 10 possible available places right so 10 choices here then nine choices here eight choices here seven choices here and six choices here so multiply this and you get the possible uh, ways to visit five locations in kerala but since it could be either this or that 
we can and they are disjoint choices we can add using the addition principle right so therefore the total number of itineraries is 9 choice number i mean you know like the uh, 9p uh, like the permutations right p how many 4 plus uh, 10 p5 right so this is the answer right or 9 into 8 into 76 plus 10 into 9 into 8 into 76 so, <clears throat> so this is 11 into 9 into 8 into 7 into 6. So this is the total number of itineraries they can come up with. It's a huge number of itineraries, right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> Here is another question. So I have eight different cowrie shells. Okay. So cowrie shells you might have seen, you know, this kind of very beautiful, very uh, nicely shaped uh, small uh, shells that you get from the sea. And uh, uh, you know they uh, they have uh, you know a distinctive you know face like you know it it comes. I don't know how to draw okay but i i am sure that you can figure out so there are this or you can search in you know google and find out what are cowrie shells so look at the cowrie shell you can see it's a distinct face right it has a nice uh, rounded face and a flat face now <clears throat> i want to uh, make a necklace out of this cowrie shells you know it used to be uh, the fashion in you know, in the in the prehistoric eras you know people or even no, not necessarily prehistoric. Even nowadays, people started using it. But you know, it used to be very uh, the, the only things available. You know, uh, before people have invented gold and things like that. So they, but they still you can you know make necklaces without using gold. So now we want to use necklace. We want to make necklace uh, using these eight different cowrie shells. But they are of different colors. Okay, so they are, come in different colors. Now, how many ways? Uh, you can make this necklace because the order, you know, when you, the, the way you keep can be different. You know, it looks different, right? But uh, we assume that the faces of the shells must all face the same way, right? You know, and I don't want to put one uh, shell this way and the other one this way, etc., like this, or even you know, one like this and one like this, right? That I don't want. So everything must be faced in the uh, same same fashion. So how many ways you can do this? Again, stop for a minute. Think about this question. Can we use any of the earlier use principles or we want something new? Or maybe you need uh, something that we already know and then something new. Or like, you know, we can use many of the earlier things used together or just one of them. So whichever way, find it out. Now, <clears throat> suppose you know, suppose we were using, you know, so this is the, you know, the, the structure of a necklace, let's say, right? So you have the, uh, why is it not? Okay. So you have this uh, necklace and uh, uh, you, you can put uh, eight of the different uh, coverage shells here, right, in a particular fashion. Now, they are of different colors, so the you know the order in which you keep are going to be different. But since it is a necklace, see, uh, let us say, suppose initially, like, you know, instead of this necklace, we had, uh, uh, let us say that, you know, we just break the necklace by putting a, you know, a connector here, right? Let's say a connector here and the corresponding uh, a male connector here maybe and a corresponding female connector here right so i can put this thing together right one inside the other so that it locks if i was doing this then uh you know or 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 in other words if i am looking at a linear arrangement of the cowry shells right in a, in a line right so i can i can just open this up it forms a straight line right but here is a special uh, hook maybe and here is another hook 
So uh, the way I'm going to put here are going to be different, right? So there are uh, uh, all possible permutations or linear or linear arrangements of these uh, eight shells. So therefore, eight factorial ways I can do this, right? So the number of ways I can arrange in this line is going to be eight factorial. But now, since you know, uh, I'm going to put this in this circular fashion, you know, without maybe without using any of these connectors like this, uh, then uh, what I can say is that, see, if if I take this necklace and just rotate it, right? I just rotate it you know, this once, right? So this uh, shell comes here, so this comes here, this comes here, this comes here, etc. So I just rotate the necklace. It is the same. No, it doesn't matter. You know, rotating a little bit does not make any difference. So if I rotate it, it is not going to make any difference. So therefore, you know, if I had this eight factorial arrangements, right? I take one of this, right? I put the for you know into into this form and then make this uh, circular necklace. If I rotate, you know, the the thing, uh, the cover shell which was here after the rotation will come here, right? I'm rotating it comes here. So I get a different permutation, but you know, it's going to be give the same necklace. So therefore, you know, a factorial is not the correct answer because I am over counting some of them. Now, how many times I am over counting? So what you can observe is that. Since you know, once I take any such permutation and uh, you know make a necklace, if I just rotate it like you know and put this guy to this position or put this guy to this position, put this guy to this position, right? So any of this will give the same necklace, you know, or in the circular uh, fashion, they are all going to give the same order, right? The circular order is the same. So therefore, in the necklace, they are all going to be the same. But one necklace, you know, one one cover shell can sit in any, any of these eight different positions. You know, once you fix the order, and you the everything else will rotate together, right? And therefore, there are eight, exactly eight possible ways for this guy to be moved around in the circle. Therefore. You know, out of these eight factorial arrangements, eight of them are going to be giving the same circular order. But now this is true for any given order, right? Any, any, you know, instead of this, I take some other arbitrary order, like, you know, then I do this again, the same thing. Each one corresponds to eight uh, cases in the linear order. So therefore, for all of them, I have exactly, you know, eight possibilities which are giving this exactly the same necklace so therefore i can divide by eight, right intuitively so i divide eight factorial by eight so i get seven factorial right eight is equal to eight factorial divided by eight right one into two into etc up to eight by eight is one into two into etc up to seven so <clears throat> this tells us that the number of Possible arrangements of the necklace, I mean the cover shells into a necklace is seven factorial. And what we use here is a so so we use two principles, right? We used uh, the product rule, and then we used something uh, some uh, observation to be able to uh, divide. Now, how did we divide? What allowed us to do the division? So let us make it precise. So let uh, us consider two sets, S and T, both are finite sets. And uh, consider a function, let's say F, which maps from T to S. Okay. We call the function F to be D to one function, where D is a positive integer. If for every element S, let's say in S, exactly D elements of T, uh, D elements of the capital T, right uh, has uh, f of that element is equal to s right their image is going to be s for exactly t elements so 
with respect to the function exactly uh, t inverse uh, d inverse elements each element in uh, s s then it's called a d to uh, one function here is an example of a two to one function to make it more clear if you have not seen this my students of course know this already if you have not taken uh, uh, math courses maybe you are not familiar with the terminology so here you have a uh, one element of s and correspondingly exactly two elements right according to f similarly for this element i have these two elements and for this guy i have exactly these two so because uh, the you know pre image or the inverse elements of uh, each of the element in s are going to be exactly two it's a two to one function so similarly you would define t d to one function now the division principle says that if for some function f there is a you know uh, this d to uh, you know there is, for some function f uh, which maps from t to s uh, that function f is d to 1 then cardinality of s is equal to cardinality of t divided by d for finite sets s and t so you have sets s and t and uh, uh, if for uh, some positive integer d right we have f maps from t to s is a d to 1 function then cardinality of s equal to cardinality of t by t you know once you once you see how this function behaves it is immediately clear to us right intuitively but we are going to form it as a division and say it as a uh, division principle and this principle can be used precisely when you can define such a uh, d to 1 function that is important so here is a question 40 students are there in a class and uh, three are going to be chosen as class monitors okay now how many ways we can choose them so from the previous uh, uh, countings that we have done we can now see that right i want to choose three persons for the monitors so for the first monitor i can choose any of the 40 students right so there are 40 choices for the first monitor then for the other monitor second guy i don't you know i am choosing three different uh, people right so i cannot choose uh, the first guy so that i can choose any of the uh, 39 remaining students now once i choose the 39 uh, i mean the second person uh, out of the 39 then the third person can be chosen other than the first two right so there are 38 choices and these choices are independent right so therefore 40 into 39 into 38 ways i can choose these three guys right is it correct so if you don't think it is correct how do you improve the answer or if you think it is correct see uh, think it uh, about it again and see whether there is something that we are missing okay so now the argument is incorrect because we count the same three persons more than once right for example when you look at let's say persons a b and c right so the first person to be chosen as the first monitor was let's say a the second person chosen was b and the third person chosen was c in another another choice we could have chosen let's say again a as the first person c as the second person and b as the third person and we will still get the same three a b c as the monitors right similarly i could have b as the first choice right c as the second choice and a as the third choice we will still get the three guys as the monitors because we didn't distinguish between the positions of the monitors right we just said there are three exactly three class monitors we are going to choose we did not say that one guy is superior to the other or you know, one guy has a higher rank than the other nothing like that, right so therefore all these you know a b c or a c b or c b a right each of these choices are going to give us exactly the same three guys so which means that we have counted them more 
so uh, we already did some overcounting so now can we do something to undo the overcounting right so we observe that in each of the cases we do the overcounting also exactly the same number of times okay because if a b c are going to be the monitors it could be either of this a b c a c b or then uh, what are the other choices b c a right b a c or uh, c a b or c b a right and exactly these possibilities only right any other choice of any any other choice of order rate right, all the people will not give exactly this three guys so therefore to choose the three guys we have you know we have counted them in how many times one two three four five and six times so six times we have over counted the same three triplet of people right and one can you know think about a little bit and see that for every triplet this is true because abc were arbitrary right so therefore we have a d21 function if you want to define the formally the sets and all you can do it i will uh, uh, skip that part but think about it and say, try to define it uh, it would be a nice way to see so we have uh, uh, this function and therefore we can use the division principle and say that since we counted this uh, 40 uh, where is that 40 into 39 into 38 and every triplet we counted exactly six times i can divide by six now right so this is going to be the number of ways to choose the three class monitors <coughs> okay now <coughs> now more generally you know this uh, same principle can be used to count the number of k element subsets of facet so what we did precisely was here was to find a three element subset of this 40 element set right because we wanted to just choose three per persons so that was a three element subset but what we did was to basically count the uh, three permutations and then we divided by six right but in general, what we can do is that we can count the k permutations, okay? And once you do the k uh, count the k permutations, we observe that the k permutations of a fixed set are going to be exactly k factorial, right? And once you have any of these k factorial, they will all give the same set. So therefore, I can divide by the k factorial to get the total number of k element subsets. So to count the k element subsets, I can just use this, right? So first count the thing that we already know how to count, right? The k permutations and then divide by k factorial. So we have the k permutations here, which is uh, p and k, and then I divide by k factorial. So I get n factorial divided by n minus k factorial by k factorial, so, right? That's n factorial by k factorial into n minus k factorial. So this is our uh, a number of k element subsets so we can count the subset by counting the uh, k permutations first right or listings right k element subset that we can list right okay <clears throat> so we denote this number by you know this way we have seen this many times i am sure math students definitely know so n choose k is called n choose k you read this so this is the standard notation to say that we are going to choose k element subsets of an n element set right that is the number of ways to do this the number of k element subsets of an n element set n choose k now <clears throat> this number is called the binomial coefficient okay kth binomial coefficient of n and the reason is because this appears in the well known theorem called binomial theorem so what is binomial theorem so binomial is a, uh, a you know polynomial with exactly two terms so you have these two terms and uh, that is called a binomial so x plus y is a binomial now i take the, x, uh, the binomial and take the nth power of it right 
So it's basically product of n copies of x plus y, right? So x plus y is its factor. There are n uh, copies of this factor. So how do you expand this and what are they going to be the terms, right? So binomial theorem says that this expansion is precisely summation k is equal to 0 to n, n choose k, x raised to k into y raised to n minus k. <clears throat> so what we know is that when you take the product, you can only have as factors either, you know, uh, you know, terms coming from, uh, you know, the monomials coming from x and y, right? Every factor must con uh, contribute one of the factors, x or y. So it will be some power of x and into some power of y, right? These are going to be the terms. All the terms are going to be this way. So it can be x raised to 0, y raised to n, right? Or x raised to n, y raised to 0, or x square and y raised to n minus 2, or any of these things. Now, how many of these guys are there, right? So, to, to basically, so, you know, if you want to write, there is going to be like, you know, many, many, many terms coming here, right? So, we don't want that. So, we want to write them together. All these similar terms I can put together. But how many of them are there? The binomial theorem says that precisely n choose k, terms of the form x raised to k, y raised to n minus k are going to be there. Why is this? Well, this is immediate, actually. If you look at the uh, the product x plus y whole dash to n. So what is x plus y whole dash to n? It is x plus y into x plus y into etc. x plus y, right? Now how do I form the term x raised to k, y raised to n minus k? To form x raised to k, y raised to n minus k, I should be able to choose exactly k copies of x. And the remaining all must be copies of y, right? Because I don't have a choice but to choose from every factor, at least once, right? Because the product has like all these n terms, you know, they are multiplying. So from each of this, I have to choose one, 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 right? So how many ways I can choose x raised to k? The remaining must be all y. So there is no choice, right? So if I choose k of the x's, then I am done. So how many ways I can choose k x's? Well, so we have exactly n right factors right x plus y x plus y the first copy second copy etc nth copy so out of these n copies i decide which of the k copies i want to select the x from so uh, how many ways i can do this exactly n choose exactly n choose k ways so the n choose k ways i choose x raised to k the remaining all terms i don't i don't choose right whatever is except for this set everything else the complement all the n minus k sets are going to give exactly y because otherwise the power of x will increase right so therefore by definition of uh, n choose k we can see immediately that uh, this is a coefficient of x raised to k y raised to n minus k is exactly n choose k now, how many terms can appear? Well, k can be either 0 or 1 or 2 or up to n. So, therefore, x raised to k, y raised to n minus k, summation k equal to 0 to n, n choose k. That is the expansion of x plus y whole raised to n. So, that is the binomial theorem. 